Hello dear friends. This may look like a simple Bluetooth speaker, but boy let me tell you, the process was anything but easy. It was filled with frustrations, burning through components and facing challenges I never saw coming when I first dreamed up this idea. So stick around to watch me struggle through it all. It all started with this wild brain fart. Why not build a Bluetooth speaker with a housing made entirely out of core coasters? Just stack a bunch of coasters into a big cylinder and cram some electrical components in there. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, that's what I thought too. I started out by collecting some electrical components like this tiny amplifier, a slightly larger but compared to my wiener still very small voltage step downboard and Bluetooth receiver. Then I spent what felt like forever trying to make all the parts work together. After what felt like an eternity, and many fried components later, I finally managed to get the setup working. Connected. Well, kind of working. It was producing a high-pitched buzz and I had an unbalanced sound output in the speakers. Not exactly what I had in mind. And on top of that, after all that work, I realized that the components would never fit in the design. <laughs> This left me utterly frustrated, but as my late uncle Freddie Mercury used to say, the show must go on. So out with the old and in with this new Dolatec audio unit, which works on a 5 to 24 volt DC input, has a built in Bluetooth 5.0 module, is capable of 2 times 40 watt output, comes with a remote control, and the word on the street is that it can even predict your future. And of course, this time, I checked if it would fit the courses before continuing with the build of the parts. Next up is the battery integration. I traced the battery shape to make a top and bottom cap to keep it in place. To prevent the battery from overheating, I added a thermal pad to connect the battery to heatsink. Then I cut some donut shaped coasters to create an air chamber around the battery. All on the hope that it would help to keep the battery cool. The heatsink will stick out the top as well as the bottom to create a chimney effect for passive cooling. At least that was my theory. To test my assumptions, I first made a dry fit with the temperature probe inserted into the battery cavity. With the charger plugged in, I started working on the speaker cutouts while keeping an eye on the battery temperature. I make sure to carefully trim away the cork, because I need this to be a very tight fit. That's what she said. To ensure I always have the same center point on the drill press, I made myself this jig, which is a clear sign of intellect. Using an edge trimmer and a questionable setup, I made a recess in the speaker cover. This allowed me to fit the speakers in between two coasters without having a gap. Then, with an even more questionable setup, I also trimmed the radius on the cover. After gluing up the coasters for the speakers, 
I checked the battery temperature and found that it was still well within the safe operating temperature. So now with full confidence I could glue up the battery pack as well and keep it hidden from humanity until the end of time. As the glue was drying, I moved on to the integration of the remote controller. I added magnets in both the speaker cover and the remote holder to secure everything in place. I used some simple plastic spacers to lift the remote to the top surface of the cork and I added a clear filament tube to allow infrared signals to reach the receiver. Going back to the housing, I used a router bit with the exact size as the DC charging plug to drill a hole in some packed coasters. This gave me a perfect hole for the DC plug, which I fixed with some hot glue. I also needed to drill a hole throughout the speaker to guide the speaker wires. With the battery compartment finished, I could focus on the audio unit. I glued up two coasters and cut away the core to create some space. I also added the clear filament for the infrared situation I had going on and then I mounted this part to the rest of the tower. During the installation of the unit, I noticed how lucky I was as it barely fits. That's what she said. I sealed one hole with silicone. That's what she said. And glued all the parts together to complete the assembly. In the end, I really like the way it looks and feels, and the sound is much better than expected. However, I wouldn't build it again, 
since some overheating issues in the module kept it stuck in a startup loop. That essentially forced me to cut the whole thing open and perform an open heart surgery to reset the module. Speaking of open heart surgery, please let me know in the comments what you think about this design. And if your heart skipped a beat, please like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one.